I'm so excited this morning. Amen. I remember this prophet, Malachi, sorry, Malachi says, If I am the father, where is my honor? If I am the master, where is my respect due me? If I am the king of kings, where is the praise? Amen. <laughs> if our God is the king of kings and we need to praise him. Amen. If our God is the Lord of lords, we need to honor him, praising and adoring and lifting up his holy name. Amen. Today is all about knowing the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If you are able to stand, stand with me. We are going to right jump into a little time of worship, a little time of praising, a little time of adoring, a little time of honoring, a little time of, you know, glorifying our glorious God. Amen. How many of you are ready to worship God one more time? Because this Sunday is all about worshiping the King. Amen. This Sunday is all about honoring Him and shouting to the name of Jesus, crying, Hosanna, 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 the coming King. Amen. The King who is coming in the name of the Lord, be praised. Amen. People were shouting all over and the children were shouting all over. They put the, you know, palm branches and they put all the clothes oh, on the path and the donkey was going and Jesus was riding on the donkey. Amen. And he was entering into Jerusalem. And that was his triumph entry. Amen. Our king was entering into the holy city called Jerusalem. This morning the king of kings and the lord of lords wants to enter in this place. Amen. He wants to ride on the donkey and he wants to come and bless everybody. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. God, we praise you. And we worship you. And we adore you. You are the king of kings. And there is no one else like you, Lord. So we sing, Hosanna. 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 Hosanna in the Adore him. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we praise you, Lord, and we adore you, God. We magnify your holy name, and you are the king of our hearts. You are the king of glory. You are the king of peace. Hallelujah. And you are the king of the heaven. Hallelujah. And you rule over everything, oh God. Everything is under your sovereignty. Everything is under your hand. Today we are under you, Lord. Under your sovereign grace. Under your power. Under your dominion. Under your grace. Somebody, if you really feel the grace of God is overshadowing you, you cannot be just standing. Amen. Your mouth cannot be shut. Amen. You can open your mouth and praise the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Who has saved you. Who has restored you. Who has healed you. Who has delivered you. Who has given you the peace. And the entry to the kingdom of King. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We are no longer under the dominion of the darkness. But we are under the dominion of the sun. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, God. Oh, there is freedom in this house. Receive the freedom of God. Hallelujah. The grace is overflowing. The power from the throne of God is overflowing all over us. Amen. Receive. Somebody say, Lord, I receive your power. I receive your grace. I bring my life under thy dominion, Lord. You roll over me. You rule over me. Oh, we praise you. We praise you, God. You are sovereign. You are loving. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, Thank you. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we praise. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. Father, your name be glorified. We receive your word as it is. Thank you for the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the freedom that we have. Freedom to praise you. Freedom to worship you. Freedom to call upon your holy name. This wonderful morning, take in charge of the service. May the Holy Spirit bless every heart, every mind, every soul. We thank you and we love you. Because we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have your seats and tell to your neighbor, Today I'm going to disturb you a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make you a little, little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because this Sunday is a celebrating Sunday. Amen. Amen. Receiving the King of King and the Lord of Lord into the city of Jerusalem. Amen. And city of Jerusalem was chosen by God, established by God to be his throne. Amen. And the king was riding toward his throne. Amen. When Jesus is going to come the second time and he will have his throne in Jerusalem. Amen. That is why before he goes to the cross and suffer, he was entering into the city of Jerusalem demonstrating and revealing the very nature of Jesus. Amen. The nature has been revealed. What is the nature of God? The nature of God is he is the king of king and sovereign over everything. Amen. 
is a cosmic sovereign. And Isaiah tells me that he is sitting over the world and ruling over. And Revelation tells me God's seven eyes are all over the world looking at every single human being. Amen. And his throne is on the world, the globe of the world. Amen. He's seated on the, on the top of the world and controlling everything. And he is the king. Amen. If Jesus is your king this morning, ask yourself, if Jesus is my king. If you read Luke chapter 19, verse 37 and 38, and the Bible tells me, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest. And the blessed is the king who comes. Matthew writes me like this. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Amen. (laughs) Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. As soon as people came to know Jesus is riding on a donkey to Jerusalem, they came with their clothes, amen? Very expensive clothes, amen? Made out of uh, beautiful, you know, clothes. And they spread the clothes across the street. And people brought the palm in the branches and singing Hosanna, singing Hosanna, giving them the red carpet entry. Amen. (laughs) That is what we see in Hollywood and Bollywood, all those things. Every year they have a red carpet entry, right? Because all these pigeons and those, you know, uh, big stars, they will come and walk on the red carpet and the media is after them. The world is after them to see how these beautiful young girls, young boys are walking with all the elegant dresses, you know. The media captures and let the media know the entire world. There is a red carpet festival in Hollywood. <laughs> right now, there is a red carpet festival in Jerusalem. Amen. And Jesus is riding on the donkey (laughs) as a king. In the Old Testament times, most of the kings were riding on the donkey. When they were anointed, when they brought to their city of the rule, they usually ride on a donkey. So Jesus is telling, he is the king. Amen. (laughs) He is the Lord of lords. When Jesus was born, the prophecy was given like this. Jesus was born as the king of the Jew. Amen. And the king Herod was terrified and afraid because he wanted to be the king forever. He doesn't want any king. The moment he knew through the wise men that there's a king is born in Bethlehem and his entire body shook and he was trembled because he doesn't want anyone to rule. He was scared about knowing that Jesus is the king of the Jew. Amen. From the very beginning of his birth, the Bible tells me he was born as king, even though he was born in the manger. Amen. (laughs) He was king. That is the very nature of God. Our God is the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. And this revelation has been revealed even to the king called Herod. He was stumbled and terrified, afraid. The Bible tells me Jesus, as he's going through the week of trial and suffering and the betrayal, while he was standing before the Pilate, and the Pilate was asking, Are you the king of the Jew? And Jesus said, Yes, I am. <laughs> He's telling before the pilot. Pilot has authority to do anything. And Jesus was daring to tell him, yes, I am the king of the Jew. Pilot asked, are you the king of the Jew? 
And Jesus, yes, I am the king of the Jew. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was crucified, Pilate right like this, he wrote on the cross, Jesus from Nazareth is the king of the Jews. Amen. <laughs> so that is the very nature of God. And he is our king. He is our Lord. If you read Timothy chapter 6 verse 15. And the Bible says. He who is blessed and only sovereign. The king of kings. The lord of lords. is the only sovereign. There is no one whom we can compare with him in heaven on earth. And no one. Even devil is just a very like a sadist. Right? <laughs> yes. He is just a created being. We give him so much of honor, so much of, you know, reverence sometimes. We are afraid, but he is just like a sawdust before the Lord. Because there is no one can be compared with the sovereignty of God. Even the angels could not stand before his presence. If you read the revelation, Bible tells us the holy angels cover their faces. All the cherub and cherubs and they cover their faces. They could not face, they could not see the holies of holy. Amen. And he was to be feared among his saints. God is terrible. <laughs> God is scary. <laughs> But this God made himself humble, came into this world, came into the world just like a mere person, like you and me. The Bible tells me when he comes second time, he's riding on the clouds. Whew. Oh, what a day it's going to be. <laughs> Every eye will see him. Every eye will see him. We cannot see, you know, from here to the council bluffs because our eyesight is very short, right? When he comes, every eye will see. We don't need, uh, you know, NASA to help us with the binocular. <laughs> His figure will be visible when the king of kings comes. His figure will be visible. He's riding on the clouds. The king of kings. The lord of lords. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says. And the ruler of the king of the earth. Jesus. From Jesus the faithful witness. The firstborn of the dead. And the ruler of the kings of the earth. Through him who loves us. And released us from our sins. By his blood. He is the ruler of the kings of the earth. Amen. Almost all 208 countries. As all the presidents and the, and the, and the prime ministers. And, but Bible says he is the king of all kings. Amen. And he is the lord of all lords in this world. If you read Revelation chapter 16, 19 verse 16 says. And on his robe, on his thigh. He has a name written. King of kings. The Lord of Lords. It has been written. <laughs> and he is the king. And he is the Lord. Revelation chapter 17 verse 14 says. And these will wage war against the lamb. And the lamb will overcome them. Because he is the Lord of Lords. And the king of kings. And those who are with him are the called and chosen and the faithful. Amen. This is the challenging part of my message. And the Bible tells me when Jesus comes back and he will overcome everything. Amen. And he will be victorious over everything. In a week time you will learn about how Jesus, you know, you know, gave the death to the dead. Amen. And he killed the dead. Amen. The death has no more power over the children of God. And we are born to live with Jesus forever and ever. For Christians, there is no eternal death. Amen. For all of us, we have eternal life to rule with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we will be princes. We will be a prince. Amen. So that is the reward that is coming when Jesus is coming back. So it is amazing truth to understand. Amen. 
you are made for more you no need to limit yourself and god is sovereign and he is giving you that opportunity to be with him and rule the world from everlasting to everlasting so this is so incredible truth every christian must know because he is the lord of lord the king of kings and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful amen who are these people who are with jesus number one they are called say to your neighbor you are called you are chosen and you must remain faithful these are the people who will be with the king of kings who will be with the lord of lords they are called and they are chosen and they are faithful till the end this king is awesome and wonderful you may be wondering why these people are standing with me amen they're preaching along with me today come on <laughs> you know that i come from africa right <laughs> the african pastors always go with a big crowd <laughs> i told you this is a smaller church i have been a pastor <laughs> anyway <laughs> but we were going to grow big amen people will come to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords and we will bring glory and honor to the lord psalms 93 says the lord reigns he is robed in majesty the lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength indeed the world is established firm and secure your throne was established long ago you are from all eternity the seas have lifted up lord the seas have lifted up their voice and the seas have lifted up their pounding waves mightier than the thunder of the great waters mightier than the breakers of the sea the lord on high is mighty amen <laughs> The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. And he is sovereign, he rules. He is mighty. He established his throne. And he is our God. He is our king. Amen. Today we must worship. We must praise him. Amen. Amen. in africa always we say praise like an african amen <laughs> even this you know the ceiling may be come down sometime <laughs> that is how we praise the king of god we do not hold back amen nothing will stop but jesus when he was riding on the donkey entering into jerusalem pharisees were so mad with jesus and the bible tells me that they asked jesus jesus can you ask your disciples to be quiet can you stop them can you shut their mouth and jesus said if they do not praise i tell you these stones will praise me hallelujah if they keep their mouth shut i tell you the mouths of these stones and the walls will be open and they will give the lord praise which is due to the king of kings which is due to the lord of lords amen and i want to challenge you this morning before the nature begin to praise you you are created in the likeness of god in the image of god you are given mouth you are given language you are given skills you are given the gift of salvation you should be the first one to burst into the time of praising the king of kings and the lord of lords and he is wonderful amen hallelujah as long as you have breath as long as you have strength you must praise the lord and jesus say if they do not praise these stones will praise me if they do not praise these mountains will cry out one day in the last days amen so now we need to praise the world is going to stop us not to praise jesus i tell you i tell you the moment you are about to pray and your mind is so divided you could not concentrate praying to the lord 
the moment you about to praise the lord all the problems comes and stops you not to praise the lord because this world and the people of this world always against the king of kings and the lord of lord and the problems in this world will stop us but we should overcome those problems and we should burst into the time of praising the king of kings the lord of lords do not let your problems to stop you do not let your religious beliefs to stop you do not let your unbelief to stop you do not let your pain to stop you do not let your suffering to stop you do not let your selfishness to stop you to praising the king of kings somebody if you are ready if you are free if you are delivered praise the king of kings do not let this thing to stop you even do not let the devil himself to stop you to praise the king of kings this is what happened when jesus was tempted by the devil when he was in the you know desert and the devil comes if you bow down before me and i will make you the prince of the world where devil did not understand jesus he is the king of the entire universe hallelujah, hallelujah. and he tried to have the worship of jesus and jesus said get behind me satan amen he rebuked him and the devil left him amen so do not let the devil stop praising you praise pray stop you praising the lord do not let they all come against us they all come against the church they all come against our belief even the government will stand against us but nothing will stop us praising jesus nothing will stop us proclaiming the gospel amen nothing will stop us going forward doing great things for the kingdom of god so today is a day to praise the king of kings and the lord of lords amen <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah are you ready to praise with me these guys are going to preach with me right now <laughs> we are going to sing this song worthy you are worthy hallelujah if you are free if you want to stand you are fine if you sit no problem all i want you to burst in the time of remembering understanding knowing the sovereignty of our king amen do not let the stone to praise him when you are created to praise our core purpose of creation is to praise him amen he created us to praise him i adore him and worship him don't give the devil the reverence don't give the world the respect but you praise the lord amen you need to honor him and you need to worship him worthy lord of lords you are worthy Oh 
worship you, Father. We adore your holy name. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Just worship him, just worship him. Hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. Give the Lord a shout of praise and clap offering, guys. He's our king. <laughs> Have your seats. I'm not done. <laughs> I have two more points to share. They are still good in timing. Amen? I will release you in the right time. Amen? I will keep my time. I am an American now. <laughs> in our countries, we don't keep time. The time can wait for us. In America, time cannot wait. Right? <laughs> So I am an American now. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Number two, the king of kings leads you. Amen. And the Bible tells me, Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 3, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethbage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a air colt by her. Unite them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. Amen? Tell them all you have to say, the Lord needs them. Amen? So, number two, the king of kings needs you. Amen? The king of kings needed a donkey. Amen? A brand new donkey, nobody rode on it. Amen? <laughs> nobody ever riding on the donkey. It's a brand new donkey, only made for the purpose of that one day to carry Jesus. Amen? Give a ride to Jesus. And Jesus needed this donkey to ride. On it and enter into Jerusalem as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus needed Peter's boat, amen. When he went to, you know, the seashore of Gal uh, Galilee, when, you know, Andrews and Peter, they were washing the nets, and Jesus tells them, Can you give me your boat? <laughs> because Jesus wants to sit on the boat and preach to the multitudes. So Jesus needed a boat of Peter for the kingdom of God. The reason the Lord needs you is to make you know your purpose. Amen. That is the only reason God has for you to, you know, give yourself to him. He wants you so that you will know his purpose. And you will know your purpose on this world. Right? The Epicureans and the Greek philosopher says, we live in this world just to eat and drink and marry. Tomorrow we will die. No. <laughs> we don't do that. Our purpose is to serve the king of kings. Our purpose is to serve the Lord of lords. He needs you so that he will make you know your very purpose. The meaning of your life. And the impact that you will impact in this world. So he needs you so that you will know. And he also is going to, you know, show, demonstrate his glory over your life. Amen. 
I always said to pastors, we are the carriers of God's glory. Amen? We carry Jesus on our, cro- on our lives. Paul says, I carry Jesus every day on myself. Amen? So we carry the very great, great you know, glory of God. My brothers and my sisters. And Jesus need a glass of water from a Samaritan woman. Amen. <laughs> he went to Samaria sitting at the well which was dug by the you know, patriotic call Jacob. <laughs> and he, the Samaritan woman comes to the well to fetch the water. And Jesus said, can you give me a drink? <laughs> Jesus need a glass of water. <laughs> So that the entire Samaria will experience the King of Kings grace. Amen. The Lord of Lords, sovereign provision call, gift of salvation. So Jesus need a glass of water from Samaritan woman. Jesus need a house to stay when he went to Jericho. As soon as he looked at Zacchaeus who was, you know, climbing on the sycamore tree. He went to say to him, Zacchaeus, come down. I must stay in your house tonight. (laughs) So Jesus needed a house to stay. So this morning I want to let you know that the king of kings needs you. Whatever is precious to you, would you able to give up for Jesus? Would you give up your life for Jesus? Would you give up your, pro, your, your, your blessings and your, your, your treasures to Jesus? Whatever is feeling like, you know, it's a treasure. You don't want to give up. You hold it very tightly. This morning, the king of kings coming and asking you, would you give up that one to me? So that I will reveal the purpose. Amen. Not to just take from you. Rather to bless it. Amen. To fill that stuff with my glory. So this morning God needs you. If you come to him. And he will make you know your purpose. And you will magnify. And he will demonstrate. And he will reveal his glory over your life. Your life will be so glorious. So he needed a donkey. He needed a Peter's boat. He needed a glass of water from Samaritan woman. And he needed Zacchaeus house. So this money God doesn't need anything. Amen. Doesn't need the material things. All he wants is you. Amen. Would you allow yourself? He wants you. He needs you. In a sovereignty he doesn't need you. Right? But when you think about the love of God, in his love, he needs you. Amen? He loves you. Without him, we are incomplete. Without us, he is already complete. Amen? Get that? Get that? But yet God wants to have fellowship with us. Ray told yesterday, it's not that we call God, come down, be with us. Rather, God is already there and calling, come and be with me. Just a privilege, right? Just a privilege. Coming to church is a privilege, amen? You are coming to the presence of God to seek the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So Jesus needs you today. If you have not given up yourself for him, today is a day. Give yourself to Jesus, amen? All the compartments be opened for Jesus, you know? We always compartmentalize our life, you know, blocks this Lord, just take this place and rule over. But this other part of my life, I want to just do it my way. No, 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 no. Today is a day you say, Lord, I give everything. Amen. I want to be your use. Amen. Use me, Lord. Hallelujah. The donkey was ready to be used. And the owner of the donkey just released it. Amen. So just release to Jesus. And I'll, then you will see the glory. Amen. What a privilege that donkey had a king of kings and the lord of lords to ride on it, right? And the donkey was given a presidential procession. <laughs> the beautiful, expensive cloths were, you know, all over the, all over the road. You know, he, he's riding. And the donkey got the privilege. Today you get a privilege when you give yourself unto the Lord. Number three, recognize The time of God is coming to you. Recognize the time of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, is coming to you. 
If you read Luke chapter 19, verse 41 and 44, as he approached Jerusalem, saw the city, he wept over it as a king. He was a king. People are rejoicing, shout, shouting, and praising him. As soon as he entered the door of Jerusalem, the Bible tells me he saw the city, he wept over it as a king. Because the king's city was not ready to receive the king. The Bible tells me furthermore, verse 42, and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it is written, it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. You did not recognize. The king was ready into, you know, entering into the king's city, Jerusalem. But the people of Jerusalem, the city itself, were not ready. Not knowing the time of God. Not understanding the person of Jesus. They did not recognize. The religious leaders did not accept him. Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes and all the high priests did not recognize the time of God. God was coming to them. Hallelujah. You know, all the religions in the world, you know, tells us to seek, you know, go to God. But only the Christianity tells us God is coming to the humanity. Hallelujah. No other religion tells in this world. All the religion teaches you need to climb the mountains. You go to the rivers. And you have to go in the jungle. You need to beat yourself. You need to self-control yourself. Then you are able to seek God. Able to understand God. Able to know God. Maybe God may be pleased to let, let let you know him. But it is only the Christian belief talking about God himself coming. Amen. And he is taking initiative all the time. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells me he came to seek the lost. He came to save. Hallelujah. Now the king of kings is entering to this great city. His city. Jerusalem. But the city did not recognize him. The people of that city did not recognize him. But this morning God tells us, recognize the time of God is coming to you. Amen. He is coming to us every day. He is coming to us. You know, Nineveh, a huge, big city. As soon as prophet, you know, Jonah went, they repented and received the message of the king. They repented. Samaria, when Jesus went into Samaria, the entire city of Samaria recognized the coming of the Lord. You know, I was a missionary in Africa for five years. I tell you, the entire Africa, apart from the northern Africa, the rest of the Africa recognized Jesus as their Lord. Amen. That is the reason why Africa survives and thrives. Amen. Jesus is the reason to Africa to rise. Amen. Jesus is the only reason that country is being blessed tremendously in many ways. And people are rising up. If Jesus were not preached in Africa, they did not understood the gospel, I tell you, it will be a hostile continent. But it is no more. Amen. It is booming up. Amen. It's booming. The only reason is the Christ. Only reason is the gospel. Only reason is the church is very much alive in African continent. Hallelujah. So recognize the time of God is coming to you. Very important. But unfortunately, Jerusalem was not recognizing the time of God coming to it. It's so pathetic. We live in a Christian country, but that is our condition that people don't recognize Jesus anymore. Our schools don't. Our universities don't, right? And people call us Jesus freaks. You tell them, yes, I am a Jesus freak. Amen. (laughs) 
Tell him, yes, I'm a church goer. Amen. I go for my king of kings. I'm not going for you. Tell them. <laughs> you don't need to evaluate me. I'm going to church to see my king of kings and the Lord of lords and worship him. So recognize the time of God is so important. The king is coming. Amen. He's going to come back again as a king of kings. And the Lord of lords is going to rule the entire world. And we will be with him forever and ever. It is worth it. Amen. Say to your neighbor, it is worth it. All my suffering, my pain, my rejection, my disgrace, worth it. Amen. All I know that I will be with my king, king of kings and the Lord of lords. Can you stand on your feet? Praise the king of kings. Praise him. The Lord needs you. Number three, recognize the time of God coming to you. Right now he's coming and knocking at your door. Some of you just closed your heart. You are a namely a Christian, a nominal Christian. You really not allowed the king of king to rule over your heart. Would you open up your heart? Would you give yourself to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? This is a final call. Hallelujah. For today, God is saying, I am your King of Kings. I am your Lord of Lords. Come to me. Come to me. Praise me. Worship me. That is what the Lord is saying. And he's wonderful. He's magnificent. He's a loving king. He came to bring the peace. King of peace. The peace runs like a river. You receive the peace of God this morning. Is there anyone say, Lord, the king, I give my life to you. And I want to be ruled by you. Can I see your hands? As acknowledgement to the Lord, how many would say, you are my king. Rule over my life. Rule over my family. Rule over this church. Rule over my business. Rule over everything belong to me, Lord. You are the king. I'm here to serve the king's purpose. I'm here to serve the king's purpose. Nothing else matters. Jesus, you are wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your children today. Provide them every need concerning their lives. Let them receive your healing now in Jesus' name. Let every hearts and minds and mouth be open to praise you. Sing your praises. Sing your glory. Declaring your wonderful deeds. Oh, you are good. And you are so good. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy. You are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords. You are worthy.
bless us. Provide every need concerning the lives of your children. You protect your children, Lord. Send us with a gift of praising you, worshiping you, pondering over all your goodness upon our lives. Continues to sh- cause your face to shine upon us. Bless us, O oh God. Now, people of the living God, I commit you into the hand of our Father. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord rise his countenance of his face upon us. May the Lord protect us from our going and our coming. May the Lord present before his throne without any blemish. For the only sovereign God, for him be the glory, honor, power, authority forever and ever. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.